Welcome to another episode of Behind the Art. This episode, we have a wonderful young man on fire for God. As you can, when you when he comes, you see him. He's busy, twenty four seven, but he still made the time to speak with us during this broadcast. And without further ado, um, I want to introduce our brother, Nana Mensa. Nana Mensa, are you there? How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. I'm good. I'm good. But how are you? How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> we are glad to have you here. We appreciate your time. You know, before we even get to talk, I just want um, the listeners to listen to one of your first singles that came out this year in January. And after that, we'll talk mm -hmm. more about you, what you are doing, your career, and even your new single that's out uh, this March. All right. So just give us a few mm -hmm. seconds and then we'll just get back to the conversation. No problem. As you can see, that's Rock of Ages there. But that's the first single by Nana Mensa. Indeed, what a mighty God we serve. Uh, so, Nana Man, I just yeah, want to yeah, yeah. uh, can you take us back to your story, how everything began, mm -hmm. you know, childhood growing up, and how did you discover music, and how do you know that <laughs> it, it's your calling? Uh, I mean, it, 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 it's been a hard life, you know, a very hard life. Growing up, like you know, there's there's everybody comes with this everybody comes with the stories, everybody comes with the stereotype, but it's not that it's a stereotype. Sometimes it's just that it's a norm, you know what I'm saying? Like, so growing up, it's been a hard life. Been living, been struggling with my parents, with my mom, but my mom, my mother is very, very devoted Christian, you know. And my father, he's a believer, but he wasn't as devoted as my mom is, but Musically, both of my parents, they were very great uh, parents musically because uh, in the house growing up, I have my father there and, you know, he's playing all kinds of music. You know? mm -hmm. And then my mother there, she's she's playing gospel all the time. So it's like it was just something that was just embedded, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
just from now was embedded. Wow, that's that's amazing to hear. What's the story behind my rock of ages that we just listened to? How how did you come up with those See, my words? Yeah. My rock of ages. It's just it's 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 the the, the title is self-explanatory in itself, you know. Like, you know, there's there's this song that we sing, we used to sing at church, you know, growing up, like he is my rock, my children high place, you know, closer than a brother, Jesus is to me, you know. Uh so it's like it just came to a point where I just had to understand, you know, I just prayed to God every day. I just needed him more, you know what I mean? I was seeking him more. I need to hear from him more. And I need to learn that I uh, like I my total dependence is on God. And that, 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 that's the song that just kept flowing. And so God just kept giving me the words and it just came like my rock of ages. He's my rock and it's for ages, forever. He's not just my rock today, not just going to be my rock yesterday or tomorrow. He's my rock forever. And he's been my rock forever. So that's just how the song came. And that's how the title came about too. How, how did you feel when you first heard my Rock of Ages complete in the studio? How, how was your reaction? Like, wow, I finally did. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, to God be the glory. Everything is all glory to God, you know? Like, even to go to the studio, even to, like, just sit down and write, even to pick a beat, like, you know, I mean... It's all, it's all God. It's all total dependence on God, on my rock. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, when it came, when it came, when it, when we fit, when I finished it and we finished in the studio and it came, it came together. I mean, all praise to the one, to, to Christ, you know, that's just how I felt like God is great. God does it, you know, and he's done it again. He showed up, you know, so I guess you can say, yeah, I just, all my praises to God in everything I do. So. Wow, that's that's incredible. Um, how would you describe your music? What kind of genre do you think it falls under? Because it has this kind of like Afro <laughs> beat kind of tempo to it. At the same time, you can jam to it. You know, most people think gospel musicians are just boring. You know, just slow songs and uh, God is boring. Like, how 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 are you different? You see that's you see that right there is the reason why. The difference had to come. You see, growing up where I'm from, like I'm around, I'm around people that like they're they're in the world or they're they're of the world, you know. But and and it's 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 not that they don't want to come to Christ or they don't want to come to church or they don't want to get to know God. It's just the way us Christians now perceive, or some Christians, most Christians that they've encountered. I'm not saying Christians are bad, but most of them that they've encountered, it's probably, it probably wasn't the best encounter with them. You know what I'm saying? And it's like earlier on, uh, when me, uh, me, uh, me, you and bro Ernest were talking before the interview, we were saying music, music is a way to, 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 to break or bring those closer. So, you know, being, being in the ghetto, I've, I've, God, God gave me that open mind to understand, like, if I want to preach his gospel to those that don't know him yet, it has to come in a way where it's relatable to them. You see what I'm sorry, trying to say? So, it's gospel, and it's, it's only gospel. It doesn't matter if it's Afro beats. It doesn't matter if it's worship. It doesn't matter if it's praise. It's about the lyrics and the words of the song that God has given you to spread to the people for them to encounter with God, with Christ and for them to understand who God is. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't, there's, I don't differentiate it. It's gospel. Cause at the end of the day, the song that I'm singing or the song that I'm, I'm, I'm writing, it's, it's a gospel and it's my testimony. And it's a testimony from God of God to share with his people, to, sh to talk about the blood of Christ the cross of Christ, you know what I'm saying? It's a gospel. It's not a competition. You know what I mean? We're not in the secular world. So it's gospel. It doesn't, it, there's no, there's no, God creates beats. All beats 
it doesn't we can't go to church and say oh this person does praises or this person does worship or this person uh sings solo so what genre is it no it's still all gospel we're still all singing the gospel of god for people to hear so it's gospel that that's impressive um talk to us about your new single that you have out take us through the process how how did you get the inspiration for this newest one that you're bringing well they, well the inspiration it came it, it came it actually came when i lost i lost my i lost my uncle a dear uncle to me like you know he was there for me he took me under his bosom you know a dear uncle last year following losing my uncle i lost a very close friend of mine that i grew up with you know what i mean so it's like those were the inspirations those are what inspired me truth is this single i started writing it even before rock ages but it just wasn't the season it wasn't god's season for me to finish and for me to release it so everything's on god's time you know but those things those two losses deeply made me understand like we honestly have to count our blessings each and every second not just each and every day each and every second regardless of a pandemic or not like it, it no pandemic should should be the reason why we steer close to god no death or no misfortune should be the reason why we should steer close or call on christ that sh it shouldn't be but you know what i mean those instances are all testimony for us to get closer and for our faith and our hope to build in christ and in god so those are the two instances that got me and that's why count your blessings count your blessings came you know uh he's probably parked over there he should be parked over there yeah and that's wow. that's what happened so yeah so um i want to just want to take a pause right now and listen to count your blessings and then afterwards we come back and we talk more about it no problem no problem okay no problem
that's that that's a beautiful song, bro. <laughs> that is a banger. That's a banger. So um <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear more about it. So how does the whole process go from when you get the lyrics and then what happens next all the way to the studio? Take me through the process. You see, one thing, you see, one thing people tend to forget about music is real music is a story. It's your story. How well you can tell your story. How well you testify or narrate your story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your story or your experiences or the things that you've gone through. True say writing down writing down the lyrics is really the least. It's knowing the time of God or what God should say to you in that moment and what your what words you need God to help you place at that at that time to in tune with the beats and the flows and the melodies, you know what I'm saying? And one thing you have to understand is because music is a story, all those flows, all those melodies, you know what I mean? Those are all stories too. Like those are all stories enhancing your story. So when you're when 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 you're actually speaks of God and testifying about the goodness of God and it, it, it's 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 about your life and your story and you want the world to hear it it makes what you're doing much more or much much more meaningful so to say when i'm writing lyrics my number one thing is just praying to god every day like god, what 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 words would be best described for this situation that you took me through you know what melodies what flows would best in hands made me use this this line or for this chorus. So, I mean, that's just how it goes. And then I've been, like I said, I've been time. You know, I mean, in out of church, Sunday school. I've been a children's choir for a long time. My first spiritual father, he was a musician. So it's like it. It was just something that God destined, and so. It just all it just all works together with that total dependence on God. One thing I always keep in mind is it's not for me. It's not for me and it's not from me. It's of God and it's for God. So that's just how it goes, bro. That's how it goes. God is using you to do amazing things. January, you came out with one song. March, yeah, yeah. another song. What should we expect mm -hmm. from you for the rest of the year? Looks like you're bringing us long every uh, uh, say, True say, it wasn't my intention for two months. The next, True say, was my intentions. Like, it's like this. Where I come from, you know what I mean? I've been through a lot. Maybe another time we have a, another sit down, we'll get into all of that. But it's like, I have stories to tell. I have, I have, I have, and I have to, I have testimonies to test about the greatness and the goodness of God. Like God takes you something all the time. And before I used to just dawn on it. And it used to be like this hard, man. Like it's a hard. Like, why does God why putting me through all this stuff? But like once again, it's just and just seeking him every day. And it's like when I got it. Got, got into a better and closer relationship with him. All these things, all this music, it just started flowing. Initially, it came a point where like life was so rough, and I was just gonna quit singing gospel. You know what I mean? Like, and just start singing of of the world. You know, once again, God showed up, and he was, and and hard life. Hard life, when I say hard life, that's, it was a shift. Mark, so I used to be so hard on myself. I used to say this life is hard. Getting closer to Christ, Christ was able to make me switch that, that word hard and made it, made it into a positive outlook for me. So I broke it down into acronyms or he helped me break it down to acronyms. So hard life to the 
the fellow view listeners, it's not, oh, because it's hard life. No. Hard life stands for H, hope. Hope. You should never lose hope in this life. I survived this life. A stands for ambition. Wow. You must always be ambitious. Jesus was, was an ambition. You know what I'm saying? R, respect. You need that respect in life because respect brings humility. It brings patience. It brings wisdom. It brings guidance. You know what I'm saying? And then the D stands for determination and dedication in life and in Christ. So when I say hard life, it's because it's a model. It's a model. And it's the model I use to overcome all my barriers in this life. So that's how it goes. And in terms of for the year, you say you should be expecting a next song next month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Video. Hopefully a video for a video for Count Your Blessings should be coming out. Uh Easter Sunday. So yeah, man. And it's it's and you have to understand like I'm 28. I'm 28. So this is this is years that I've 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 wasted because I was lost for, for so long just with God. And so these are all like it's like I'm not trying to get off topic, but someone like Tupac before he died of music written and it's that's because of experiences that he's been through you know what I mean? he he was a great musician when you're a great musician you're always writing and i'm and and got been around musicians all the time whether secular or god like i go to pentecost you know um yeah. i've able kwaku just he's he's one of one of my mentors you know what i'm saying like very close mentor me so much when he came to Canada, just being beside him. You know what I'm saying? Francis Asimadu. That's what I mean. I have, like I said, my spiritual fathers from young, Samuel Aqua, Pastor Elvis. Um, and then when I come home, even to my home, my brother even sitting right my brothers around me that I call that, that that I call my brothers that I grew up with, they're all musicians. You know what I mean? And we all grew up in this in this community together from the age of like how old? And so we all we all have the same mindset in terms of it, in terms of music. So it's like me dropping these music is like if people are able to do it. You know what I mean? People of the world are able to drop music every month. Why can't Amen. a child of God do that? You see Amen. what I'm saying? Amen. So right now. Um, it's not that I'm looking for a status. Every music I make, I have in my head, God, this has to be a Grammy because of you. Wow. And that's only because of you. If it goes to, if it gets to the point where it gets to a Grammy, hey, amen, praise the Lord. But I'm saying, if they can do it, we can do it too. You know what I'm saying? And it's about time us as Christians stand to do this. We're always loafing, always loafing as Christians, always loafing. And we have to stop loafing. And one thing that I know can break the ice for everybody is music. And I like good music, or especially if you're preaching good music, there's no way that nobody's not going to listen to you. I mean, I have brothers here that haven't been to church in ages. Play this song for the whole big mic. Like I can actually feel God, you know what I'm saying? And that's what we want. Sometimes the church gets lost in, sometimes the church gets lost in, let go in the church. But what about the people outside that need the church? What about the people outside that really need to hear the gospel of Christ? What about the Amen. people outside that want to know Christ, but because of people like who are judgmental and so discriminating and always like to push and shove, they, they fear to come. And that, most times that's what it is. Most Amen. times. And, and, and it's sad to follow Christ. People don't remember like, all of Christ's followers, they were all sinners. They were all sinners. Christ didn't go to someone that was master. Every one, uh, every one of his disciples, they were all sinners and they became saints. So why are we losing that focus? 
So wow. That's where all this hunger and strive comes from. Mm -hmm. Nanomensa, it has been a wonderful, wonderful time with you. So if people want to follow you, uh, uh, want to follow your music, what's your social media handle? How how can they follow you? <laughs> uh, Instagram, Nana and Mensa. Uh, Facebook, Nana Mensa. Uh, YouTube, Nana Mensa, Distro Kid. And Whoever's listening and following, uh, Asanewa Radio is my, my my proud brothers too. So you can follow them if you want to hear about Nana Mensa. You know what I mean? And remember one thing, you know, so like for me, like social media not really a thing for me, you know, but hey, the people need to see what they need to see, but we're doing it for Christ. But, you know, Nana Mensa, uh, Nana and Mensa for Instagram, that's mainly YouTube. I just care about the music and people hearing the music. You don't even have to follow me on Instagram. You don't have to follow me on Twitter. You don't have to. I could. I, I could care less. Those are those things are not taking me to heaven. Those, it's 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 this job that I'm doing right now, and if I do it well, that's what's taking me to heaven. How much souls and how much people I'm touching. Those are the things that are supposed to take me to heaven, and that's what we're working on. At the end of the day, let's not let's be realistic. We're not kids. And even kids pass away. So Amen. why time when it comes to God and things of God? You know, so Nana El Mensa, follow me and, you know, continue to follow the, the work of Christ and, and the music of Christ. Right. God bless you, Nana Mensa. It was such a pleasure having you here. Bless you too. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to see more of you as your music keep dropping and dropping and dropping. Um, God oh, be definitely. with you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy <laughs> schedule and talking with us. We hope that God will continue to anoint your music and to reach out to the people Amen. that most of us cannot even, you know, have boldness to approach. God bless you, and we will speak Trust. to you after. Amen. Take care. God bless you too, my brother. God bless you. Appreciate that. Appreciate the radio for choosing me and having me. And God keep anointing you guys and overflowing your your station. We need stations like these around. You know, with all these stations, because, you know, let's let's be realistic. The world is, we can't let the world win. We can't let the devil win. Amen. You know, so things like these are, are much needed, much needed. The devil's a liar. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. So, viewers, so that does it for this episode. Um, you heard him say it. If you want to follow him, Instagram, Nana M. Mensa. Facebook, Nana Mensa. YouTube, Nana Mensa. And watch out 2021. He's coming after. He's coming after the music like it's hot. <laughs> and the, the devil is in trouble. Oh, amen. Amen. Devil's in trouble. Say that again. Amen. You can say that again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Until we meet again. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you.